What's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. I hope you all had a great week. Today we are going to be working on this resin notebook and it's going to have like green and gold monstera vibes so I really hope you guys enjoy this. These are A6 notebook blanks from Zendi. I will have them linked down below. And to start, you just wanna take off one side of the backing and leave the other backing on. This is gonna help catch any bits of resin drips and it's gonna make it a little bit easier to clean up. Once you get that backing off, you're just gonna to wanna to sand very lightly, focusing mainly on the edges where our resin is going to adhere to. And once you get them all sanded, you're just gonna wipe it off with a little bit of alcohol and we are ready to rock and roll with the resin. So I taped each blank to the top of two cups and this is going to help the resin drip off and not stick to your table or your surface and it's also going to give us a more level surface so we don't get any unevenness in our resin and we get a nice smooth finish. So I mixed up 100 mils of epoxy and I did not need this much at all. I probably honestly could have got away with only mixing 50 or 60. I really underestimated how small these were. And I just have three extra mixing cups here and I poured a little bit of the epoxy into each mixing cup. You're gonna wanna make sure you save a little bit of epoxy in your original cup because you're gonna use this as a base layer on your notebook blank so that your micas have something to mix around with and so they can move around freely. So I have two different mica powders here and I got these on a set from Amazon. I will have them linked down below. I used dark green and magic gold and I also used a little bit of Armor R white epoxy pigment for my white. Once you get all those mixed up, go ahead and put your base layer of epoxy down and then you can go in with your micas and your pigment dye. I really didn't have any rhyme or reason to how I put these on here. I just kind of layered them on and drizzled them on because the heat gun is going to do all the work for you. And I'll be completely honest, I was not sold on how this looked until I got my decals on and added a little bit of glitter but I absolutely love the end result. So this is one of those trust the process things. You really can't mess it up. You might not like it, but there might be someone who really, really loves it and you might just surprise yourself. Like I said, once you get decals on and finish it off, it really brings everything together. So don't stress out too much if it doesn't turn out how you like. And as you see me doing, you can just use the heat gun to move your epoxy around. It is going to drip off, so make sure you have something on your tabletop to protect your table or your working surface. I just used a piece of protective packing paper, and it's super easy to clean up. I also tipped the cups a little bit to kind of get the epoxy moving in a direction that I wanted and to give more interesting swirls. You can do this or not. It's really just about the creative process and what you want to do. And the main thing is to just have fun with it. Once you get to a place you're happy with, you can go ahead and let this cure. I let it cure overnight because I did use the regular resin from um, Artesian Epoxy, Artistry Epoxy. <laughs> Artistry Epoxy, cannot think of the name for a second. You usually see me use Counterculture DIY and I still love them very, very much. I just like to try different epoxies out sometimes. I've only used four since I've been making tumblers and it's been almost three years. So I just wanna try some different brands and see if there's something else that I like more. Um, as of right now, I am really liking their regular epoxy, but as for their fast set, I have not got it to work for me, and I think it's just a temperature issue um, in my basement, so hopefully when the summer rolls around, the fast set will work a lot better for me. 
Once your epoxy is cured, you're ready for the next step, which is sanding and decals. I did a pretty good sand on this because um, I put decals on before I sanded. And with this champagne gold vinyl, you really see every little bump. So I took the original decals off and I sanded these really, really well. After I got them sanded, I took a super sharp craft knife and just cut the extra drips off around the edges of the notebook. This is pretty easy, but definitely make sure you are careful. I got really close to almost cutting my finger off at one point in this. Um, if, as long as you get underneath the edge, it all comes off pretty easily. Once you get all the drips off the edges, you are now ready for your decals. I found this Monstera Leaf Decal on Creative Fabrica. I will have it linked down below if you'd like to use the same one. And this Live Free one I just created myself. I will have a link to where you can find that down below if you would like to use it. I think it's super cute. I placed the Live Free decal directly in the middle of the blank and I sized it at 3.5 inches across. In the Monstera Leaf decals, I have the bigger one at a 4. This is the one that's going on the top. Um, I did it in 4 inches height. And then the other one that's down towards the bottom, I did 3.5 inches in height. And I placed these Monstera leaves so they were like kind of coming from the edge of it. And you'll see how I folded the extra decal over and just burnished that onto the edge to make it really easy to cut off. It made everything look super seamless. And then I didn't have to try to fit everything around that live free decal because I was just able to cut off the extra rather than have it overlapping on the live free saying. After I got my decals on, I decided I wanted a little bit of extra something and I chose to add some gold flakes and I am so glad I did this. It looks so pretty and really tied everything in together. So to apply the gold flakes, I used the glitter glue from Artistry Epoxy and I just dabbed that on with a popsicle stick. I did add a little bit too much. You don't want a whole lot of adhesive underneath your gold flakes because it will take a little bit to dry. So if you just dab it a little bit with your finger and make it so there's not really much on your surface, then the gold flakes will go on a lot easier and you will not have to wait for them to dry as much. So I just placed these along the natural swirl pattern that happened when the epoxy was moving and added those right over top of the glue. If you're impatient like me, you can speed up the drying process even further with a heat gun, which is what I did right here. Once your gold flakes are completely dry, just take an old rough paintbrush and brush off any excess that may have not stuck down. This will really help you when you go to resin because you won't have to do as much sanding. I decided to finish off these notebooks with UV resin because it's really not as much surface area as you might think and it really didn't take a lot of resin and I would much rather use UV resin which is a little bit cheaper than to mix up a lot of epoxy and end up wasting it so that is what I did here. 
I just put a little bit of UV resin in a little mixing cup. I used between five and 7.5 mils and just sprinkled in a little bit of Bright from Peachy Olive Glitters to give us a little extra sparkle because the micas are shimmery but they're not sparkly and I am all about the glitter. So I definitely wanted to add some glitter into this. So I just applied this with a gloved finger and hit it with my heat gun. And when I do UV resin, I always like to let it sit for a few minutes on its own after I hit it with the, not the heat gun, I used a torch. <laughs> I let it sit for a few minutes after I torch it. The torch gets the bubbles out and then when you let it sit on its own for a few minutes, it does have some self-leveling properties. So it'll self-level and you'll have a really smooth surface. After I got that layer of UV resin on, I did a really light sand on it, focusing mainly on the gold leaf where there was any pokey bits. And then I wiped it down with alcohol once more. I then went in with two layers of just plain UV resin. I didn't add any more glitter. Same thing, I applied the resin with a glove finger, I hit it with my torch, and then let it sit under the UV light. I forgot to mention a few minutes ago, but since my UV lamp is so small, I did have to do this in three different sections, and I just did like the top, the middle, and the bottom, and I did all of those for about 60 seconds each, and then it was ready to go. Once your project is super smooth, you can go ahead and go back in with a super sharp craft knife and cut off any drips that might have happened with the UV resin. You can also go into the little holes and run your knife along the inside of the holes to get off any epoxy or UV resin that might have dripped into those. And then you are ready for the final steps. I got this A6 paper filler as well as the notebook rings on Amazon. You can find those linked down below. I really wish I would have gotten smaller um, notebook rings for this, but I'm trying to be really intentional about using what I already have rather than purchasing more. If I end up selling this, I will definitely get some smaller um, notebook rings because they do kind of flop around. But if I end up keeping this, I will just keep it as it is because it does serve its purpose. And like I said, I'm trying to be intentional about using everything that I already have before I buy more. I'm gonna be really honest here. Trying to get the two notebook sides plus the paper plus the jump rings in or the notebook rings in all at one time was super difficult for me and it took me quite a long time. I don't know why it was so difficult, but it was. It was a little bit challenging. Maybe if I had correctly sized notebook rings, it would have been easier, but it, it, it works. It's all good. All right, so here is the notebook when it's completely finished. I love how it turned out. I love Monsteras. I just recently got a little Monstera plant that is thriving and I am so happy about it because I am not good with plants. Um, I'm trying to get better. I'm trying to learn. Like I said, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Let me know if you would like to see more projects like this from me rather than just putting strictly Tumblr tutorials on here. I am very happy to do anything you guys want to see, so just let me know. 
Make sure to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it and if you learned some, subscribe button down below so you don't miss my weekly tutorials or weekly vlogs that I just started. Alright, I hope you guys have a great weekend and I will see you next time. Bye guys.